Cool. So now we're just going to jump straight to 7-3, um, where we deal with diagonalization. And so what what is diagonalization? Well, diagonalization is the following. Um, you have a matrix A. All right. Uh, you can actually write A in terms of S, D, S inverse. Now, what the hell is S, D, S inverse? Let's talk about that. S is going to be a matrix with uh, your eigenbasis. And if you don't remember what the eigenbasis was, uh, I talked about this briefly at the end of last video, where if you find uh, for an n by n matrix, right? If you have an n by n matrix um, and you have n linearly independent eigenvectors, then they form an eigenbasis. All right, so that, that was at the end of the last video. This is already too much theory uh, for these plug and chug videos. So, uh, okay, so that's, that's what S is. Uh, so essentially, S is just all your eigenvectors in column form. D is going to be a diagonal matrix with uh, your eigenvalues. All right. And so now let's see how we actually find these kinds of matrices uh, or how to split A into SDS inverse. And you're going to have to know how to do this um, and be really used to doing this as well. So let's say A is this following matrix. 3, negative 2, negative 2. 1, 0, negative 2. 0, 0, 3. Okay? And, all right, so what's the first step? The first step is always to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. That's essentially in chapter 7, that's what you always do. So let's find the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues. And so uh, I want the determinant of A minus lambda I which is going to be the determinant of 3 minus lambda, negative 2, negative 2, 1 minus lambda, negative 2, 0, 0, 3 minus lambda. All right. Uh, we're going to expand along this bottom right again. And so the determinant of this guy is going to be 3 minus lambda times uh, 3 minus lambda, negative lambda, and then plus 2. All right. So it's this bottom... Oh, whoops, it's this bottom value times the determinant of these, the top left two by two matrix. Okay, and this becomes three minus lambda times uh, negative uh, or lambda squared minus three lambda plus two. Okay, and so we get three minus lambda lambda plus um, lambda minus two lambda minus one all right and we can see that lambda here is equal to one two three so we have three values for our lambda all right that's cool and so now we need to find the eigenvectors all right so when you find the eigenvectors and Remember how we do that? Well, okay, so we consider a case where lambda is equal to 1. And so I subtract 1 from the diagonal, and I will get 2, negative 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1, negative 2, 0, 0, 2, right? And now I need to uh, find a eigenvector corresponding to this guy. And so by eyeballing, uh, let's say that, well, by eyeballing, essentially, or you can do row reduction, um, you'll get 1, 1, 0 is equal to V1, okay? And how do I eyeball, right? Well, you look at this matrix here, and you just try to look at any patterns, right? So if we ignore the third row, or, or the, if we ignore this third column, you'll see that 2, negative 2, 1, negative 1, that tells me that 1 and 1 are going to zero those guys out, okay? So I'm, always, I'm just going to plug in 1 and 1, and then make something happen for the last value and hope it works. And you'll see that... In this case, then, 1, 1, 0 works out perfectly. What about lambda equals 2? Okay, if lambda equals 2, uh, I'm going to take 1, negative 2, negative 2. So we're subtracting 2 from the diagonal. 0, 0, 1. Okay, again, I'm going to run into this. 
I'm going to eyeball it and I'm going to look at patterns and I see that these two entries are the same as these two entries and that tells me then that 2, 1 uh, should work and it does work because that makes 2, uh, this guy times this guy is 2, this guy times this guy is negative 2 and that makes 0. Right? Same thing, this guy times this guy is 2, this guy times this guy is negative 2 and I get 0 there. And so, so I get zero, which tells me that the last entry should be zero, and it is, so I get two, one, zero. And then finally, we turn the lambda equals three, and subtract three from the diagonal, so we get this, zero, zero, zero on the bottom, okay? And this one's a little tougher. Uh, so I'm just gonna go row by row, and so the first row uh, tells me then that uh, negative y has to equal z and then the second row uh this last row here then tells me that i got x minus 3y minus 2z is equal to zero um but this is the same thing as x plus 3z minus 2z because uh y and z are uh, because negative y equals z and then i get x minus z is equal to zero or x plus z is equal to zero which tells me that z is equal to negative x. And so now, what do I have? Well, I essentially have uh, x is equal to negative z, right? Actually, let's write it that way. That way it's probably better. Um, x is equal to negative z. And up here, this tells me that y is equal to negative z. So if I let z equal negative 1, then x has to be 1 and y has to be 1, all right? So v3 is going to be my last uh, eigenvector, and it's going to be 1, 1, negative 1. And so for this 3 by 3 matrix A, right, so A is a 3 by 3, right, no one's arguing with this, uh, I have three eigenvectors that are linearly independent, okay? And this means I can diagonalize my matrix. And so how am I going to do this? Well, remember, so A is equal to S, D, S inverse. And so how do I construct S? Well, S is the following matrix. I put V1 in this column, I put V2 in this column, I put V3 in this last column, right? And so that's gonna be 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, 0, 1, 1, negative 1. Cool, all right. What is D? Well, D, is going to be the eigenvalues that correspond to each column. So this first column, right, is v1. And so this eigenvalue up here in the top left, because remember, d is a diagonal matrix. So everything is going to be 0 except the diagonal values, so, right? So 0, 0, 0, 0. So we only have these guys open. And this first eigenvalue in the top left has to correspond to this first I, uh, this column, all right, the first column in S. And so that means that since 1, 1, 0 is in the first column, my first eigenvalue in D has to be 1. So this has to be 1, all right? Likewise, the second column here has to correspond to the second entry in D. And so uh, in this case, right, V2 uh, is 2, 1, 0, and it corresponds to the eigenvalue that is 2, so I have to put 2 there. And then likewise, V3, right, V3 comes from lambda 3, and so V3 makes the last uh, entry in the bottom right 3. And so I found S and D, um, and now I need to find S inverse, and so S inverse is just finding the inverse of S, um, use our favorite method, but you should get 1, 2, 1, or negative 1, 2, 1, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 1. Okay? And, yeah, so we've diagonalized our matrix. We found S, we found D, and we found S inverse. Usually on homework problems, they won't make you find S inverse. All you have to do is find S and D. But, yeah, again, uh, so this is how you diagonalize a matrix. And remember, the key to all of this is that we have three linearly independent eigenvectors. Um, because, so in our case, we would have written in a three by three matrix, we have three linearly independent eigenvectors. Um, 
And that's what we do. We have three linearly independent eigenvectors, v1, v2, v3. Again, if you don't have li three linearly independent eigenvectors or in an n by n matrix, if you have less than n linearly independent eigenvectors, you're going to run into some trouble. And we're not there yet. We're not going to cover that yet. Um, but just know that the only time you're ever that you could run into some trouble is if you have a, a repeated eigenvalue. And in our case, we don't have repeated eigenvalues, right? We have one, two, and three, which are all distinct, um, all unique, and we're not running into repeated eigenvalues. But once we run into repeated eigenvalues, uh, we can run into some serious trouble by not having a proper basis of eigenvectors, and we'll talk about what we need to do then. But the next video, we're gonna talk about matrix exponential.